A volcano in the middle of Europe is showing signs of life. The Earth is shaking beneath Lake Loch 60 times in just a few hours, while at the same time the situation at Campi Flegrei in Italy is becoming increasingly dramatic. The residents are desperate and are demanding evacuations. What is behind these seismic events? Should we be worried? Let's clear that up now. A warm welcome, everyone. I don't know about you, but when I hear about earthquakes rumbling beneath a German volcano, I'm just a little bit tense right now. And so that you always stay up to date on all the spectacular developments in the volcanic Eiffel and elsewhere, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything. You'll never miss another video and it really helps me out. And if you've already subscribed, giving the video a thumbs up helps it a lot. Maybe we'll even hit 5,000 likes. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, let's take a look at the seismic situation at Lake Lack. Lake Lack and the Vulcan Eiffel is a real picture postcard idol. Picturesque, peaceful, perfect for a relaxing Sunday stroll. Feel free to write in the comments if any of you have been there and perhaps also visited the picturesque Maria Lack Monastery. I'd be interested to hear about it. You would never guess that 13,000 years ago, all hell broke loose here in this idyllic setting. Back then, at the end of the last ice age, the Lacquer Sea Volcano exploded with a force that is hard to imagine today. The eruption reached a VEI-6, a colossal explosion just below a supervolcano eruption. The ash from the volcano spread over large parts of Central Europe, and everything within a radius of several dozen kilometers was completely devastated. Today, there is no trace of this. The lake that formed in the caldera is peaceful, and the landscape is green and beautiful. But beneath the surface, a massive magma system still lies dormant, and it appears that this very system has now stirred. On the night of October 9th to 10th, seismometers recorded around 60 small micro-earthquakes beneath Lake Lock. All of them occurred at a depth of about 7 to 8 kilometers and had a magnitude of less than 1. The Rhineland Palatinate State Office for Geology and Mining gave the all clear as the quakes were not noticeable to humans. Nevertheless, this is remarkable because quakes under Lake Lark are extremely rare and could indicate that the volcanic system is becoming active again. It's a bit unsettling because I'm from Cologne, which is only about 60 kilometers away as the crow flies. Even more remarkable, scientists do not yet know exactly what triggered these quakes. Was it rising magma? movement in the hydrothermal systems or simply tectonic relaxation? This is still completely unclear at present, and to make matters more difficult, we know relatively little about the magma system beneath the lake. Only recently, geophysicists succeeded in mapping the system in detail as part of a study. In the process, they discovered a cylindrical anomaly at a depth of 2 to 10 kilometers with an estimated volume of around 75 cubic kilometers. Researchers do not yet know whether this volume is completely filled with magma, now, of course, one could start to panic. Magma beneath Germany, earthquakes. Should we all quickly pack our bags? Professor Dom from the GFZ Helmholtz Center for Geosciences offers a bit of reassurance. We have no evidence of changes in the magmatic system so far. He explains in an interview with a daily newspaper, such changes would be noticeable through altered gas emissions, ground uplift, or fluctuations in gravitational pull, none of which are currently being observed. The monitoring sensors also showed no corresponding anomalies during the most recent earthquake swarm. However, this does not mean that the Laka Sea Volcano will remain dormant forever. It cannot be ruled out that there will be another eruption at some point. Earthquake swarms could indeed be an indication of an impending eruption, but only if they are accompanied by a change in gas flow and composition, ground uplift, or a change in gravitational pull, for example. However, we have not observed this so far, said Professor Dom. The problem is, in Germany there is currently no dedicated volcano observatory. It's a bit like having a sleeping tiger in the basement, but not installing a camera to see if it ever opens its eyes. Professor Dahm therefore advocates the establishment of a volcano observatory based on international models, such as those in Italy. Such an observatory would not only monitor earthquakes, but also continuously record ground uplift and gas flows, and very importantly, maintain contact with local communities, civil protection agencies, and the public, and prepare procedures for possible crisis situations. Our data and evaluations do not yet flow together automatically and in real time, and there are currently no structures or agreements in place for how scientific expertise could be incorporated in the event of a crisis, Professor Dom admits, and that is, of course, not ideal. If you have an active volcano right on your doorstep, you really ought to be better prepared. 
And yes, the volcanic Eiffel is definitely active, even if the last major eruption was 13,000 years ago. At the same time as the events in the Eiffel, we are also seeing increasingly strong earthquakes in Italy. Here, the situation is significantly more serious. In the Campi Flegre west of Naples, the Earth has been particularly active in recent days. Within 48 hours, the seismic network recorded over 70 earthquakes. Over the course of a week, there were 166, and so far this year, there have been a record-breaking 5,312 earthquakes. The strongest quake in recent days had a magnitude of 2.5. Residents are becoming increasingly desperate and calls for evacuation at the state's expense are growing louder on social media. One resident commented on a post by the Italian Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, the Italian Volcano Observatory, saying, what good is all this? We hear them, the quakes, day and night, we just want help. So nerves are on edge. I can completely understand that because the sheer number of tremors is shaking not only the buildings but also people's nerves. The Campi Flegre is a huge caldera that has been responsible for two ultra-Plinian eruptions in the past. The strongest of these eruptions, 39,000 years ago, had a VI of 7. At that time, the ash spread as far as Siberia. In the greater Naples area, tough deposits up to 60 meters high bear witness to the incredible force of this eruption. The last eruption was in 1538 when the Monte Novo cinder cone was formed. Since then, things have remained quiet, at least on the surface, because underground, a lot is happening. Volcanologists are observing a long-lasting trend of pressurization in the hydrothermal system. This means that tension is building up and at some point it will have to be released. Many experts compare the current situation to the time before the eruption in 538. Back then, there was also an uplift phase that lasted over a hundred years before the eruption finally occurred. Since 2005, the ground in Pozzuoli has been rising again and earthquakes are becoming more frequent. Does that mean an eruption is imminent? Hard to say. Volcanoes are not precision clockworks that can be predicted exactly. It could go boom in the next few years, or not for another hundred years. The situation is extremely complex and the authorities are facing a dilemma. Because on the one hand, they want to protect the population. On the other hand, raising the alert level from yellow to orange would have massive economic and social consequences. The mayor of Pozzuoli is reported to have said that the Neapolitan economy would collapse. Some residents even accuse the authorities of downplaying the danger for economic reasons. But what would be the alternative? A forced evacuation would tear apart the social fabric of the region. Because many longtime residents and homeowners would refuse to leave, especially if it is unclear how long an evacuation would last and whether they would receive compensation. At Mount Etna, people are still waiting in vain today for compensation that was promised over 40 years ago. So the situation in the Campi Flegre shows quite impressively how difficult it is to deal with volcanic hazards. On the one hand, you want to protect people, but on the other hand, you can't live in constant fear. The residents of Gairanga in Norway, where a landslide threatens to trigger a tsunami, have the beautiful term Oleve Medfjella, which translates as living with the mountain. But the Neapolitans don't just live with a mountain at risk of collapsing, they live with a volcano that could potentially explode. So it's a bit harder to stay calm in that situation. Feel free to write in the comments what you would do if you lived in Naples or Pozzuoli. Given this situation, I'd be really interested to know. In Germany, the situation is of course much more relaxed. Lake Lark is being monitored and the current situation is interesting, but there is no cause for concern. Nevertheless, the recent swarm of earthquakes shows that the Earth is not standing still here either. In my opinion, a volcano observatory would not be a bad idea, if only to be better prepared in case the situation does worsen. Of course, I'll keep you updated on all developments at Lake Lark and the Campi Flegrai. So make sure to subscribe to the channel now and don't forget to give a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. And now let's travel from Earth into space. A very bizarre object is currently wreaking havoc in the solar system. The interstellar visitor 3i Atlas is behaving so strangely that scientists are faced with a real mystery. What is this object all about? Why is it losing enormous amounts of water? You can find out in the video displayed at the top right. Be sure to check it out, as it also features exciting original footage of the object. As always, you'll find another video about science and space at the bottom right. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.